What up, gems? My name is Cyril Zuma. Welcome to the YouTube channel, the podcast. Wherever you are listening from, please show me some love and press the like button, follow button, subscribe button, whichever one it is. Just show me some love, man. And I want to give a shout out to you guys, actually. I want to give a shout out to everybody that has been so consistent with my podcast, number one, and also have been very consistent on my YouTube and Twitter and Instagram in just engaging with me in all the content that I put out. I really, 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 really love it so much. Much, man. Um, on today's episode, I want to talk about something a little bit different. I want to talk about my first times. I've had so many first times as a photographer, as, an, as a person generally just outside of my career, that I feel like I'd love to share so many of my firsts. And I hope through sharing my first, it will inspire you to actually go out and chase many more of your firsts. I know a lot of us are chasing our first cameras, whether it's a first mirrorless camera, whether it's a first uh, major deal with a, a, a company, whether it's Netflix, DSTV, whatever it may be, a magazine cover. I know those are one of the things that I've been chasing for quite a while and I'm still chasing more and uh, more things. So I wanna share my story of many firsts and I hope that through the sharing once again, it, you, you know, we inspire one another and that you guys share your first with me. So. I just want to share my first, my first first, basically. Um, just over a decade ago, I picked up a camera. And little did I know that this would literally spark a flame um, in my career. This would literally spark everything in my career. So I want to talk about the first time I actually touched the camera. As far as I can remember, I was probably about four years old, five years old. My mother had bought me Kodak cameras, those yellow ones. They were like small, small yellow Kodak cameras that used to fly around before uh, the digital cameras that we're recording with now. And I remember that so well because I was the only kid in my community who had these cameras. I remember about seven of them just sitting around me and being able to play around with that camera. So that's my first time uh, playing around with a camera. And then I remember my second, my, my, my second first, in fact, which was the first time I bought a camera, which is just over a decade ago, which really changed my whole life completely. At that time, I was working at a digital agency, really loving my job, but it much frustrated a little bit. But the first time I picked up a camera, I knew that I really wanted to do this because I could literally connect with it. I was passionate about it. I wanted to take more photos. I wanted to create memories. And I was the first person in my family to pick up a camera. In 2022, I took a leap of faith. And I started my own photo studio. I opened a photo studio from scratch. I opened up, it was literally <laughs> in Randburg. Some of you have know about the story, but I thought it would be great to share again. So when I opened up the studio, it was in 2022, um, just in the beginning of the year, in fact, I had been talking to the owners because I'd been scouting around and saw some space, which would be great for, for a photo studio. So it was literally a bedroom which had a bathroom and just a little bit of space. And I saw the vision and I really wanted my first photo studio because I understood how life-changing it is to have a photo studio. It's something I've always wanted. Even when I started out in the photography industry, it's literally one of the things that I wanted to have my own photo studio. And that literally would allow me to be able to explore so much more and get to one of my many firsts, which I'm also gonna talk about, or rather elevate one of my firsts, which I'll talk about. But yeah, opening up my first studio was something I'll never ever forget. I remember walking into the room and there was a carpet on the floor, there was a sink there, there was many things laying around in different places, but I knew that I could make a photo studio in here. And I'll share some photos of the, the beginning stages of the photo studio, what it looked like as a room in the making process, which there were two lovely and amazing gentlemen who, you know, said to me, this is crazy, but we're going to help you uh, to do this. And shout out to them for actually helping me open up my first studio. And they said, look, we'll help you. We'll go through all the trials and tribulations with you. We messed it up a few times. And we probably were building the studio for about two months before we opened it up to our first customers. So yeah, that was my first time opening up my first studio, which was in Randburg. It was a small little studio, which meant so, so much to me because it was game changing. 
it meant that I could create content at any time that I really wanted to create content. And I really encourage anybody else who wants to open up a photo studio to actually open one up because it opens your world up once again to so many things. And so, yeah, that's one of my firsts. Um, and it was the first time for me opening up a studio. And luckily for me, thank you to God, you know, I've been able to partner up with some friends and we're opening up another one in Santon. So really, really amazing to see what my first studio is doing. It was really helping me to open up a bigger studio, a much more um, um, knowledgeable me is able to open up a bigger studio and a better studio in the heart of Santon. So yeah, I definitely encourage anybody who wants to start out a photo studio, even if it's in your bedroom, try it out. Open up your first studio, even if it's in the bedroom. The other first, which was mind boggling, which still is mind boggling to me now, actually, um, is, is I was the first person to open up a stock photo platform in South Africa. So South Africa officially has the first stock photo platform with just images of black people only. Previously, we've had other global companies supply images of black people, but I've been brave enough to actually open up my first stock photo platform, which you can check it out, by the way. So I'm going to self-plug myself, www.colorspace.co.za. That is the website. Make sure you check it out and see stock photos of black people and also submit, become a member, submit, get in there and submit. So let me talk about the journey of opening the first stock photo platform in South Africa and the first stock photo platform in South Africa with images of black people. It really is a hard one. It was really difficult. I remember back in 2008, that is when I first registered the company under the name of iStock Africa, before it became Colorspace. So under the name of iStock Africa, and the I stands for image, stock, Africa. So we stock images of Africa. And it was a really amazing name. We started going. Um, you know, I really got excited and I needed to register a company. So I registered a company which was quite bureaucratic, eh, what's this word, bureaucratical, political, basically. It was so hard to open up a company in South Africa. But anyway, I persevered through that, opened up the company, got my papers, BE and all the likes. And now I was an official company, but I didn't have a website. And so I turned around and looked at all my friends and I said, I need a website ASAP. Luckily, I had friends who were able to help me out and they were really good at SEO, number one. They were also good at building websites, uh, WordPress websites. So we all got together and I bought them lunch and we all got together and we started doing business plans. We started doing websites. We started doing social media platforms, social media handles, social media strategies, or everything you can think of uh, in terms of just opening a business in, from what we know, right? It's my first time opening a business. I don't even know what to expect. So I'm doing everything I can, looking on, to, on, on the internet. How do I get into the books of those businesses? How do I do this? How do I do that? And I was so lucky to, enough you know, to actually break through and the company was able to then and make some, a little bit of turnover and we were able to migrate to a brand new website, number one. And then number two, we were able to change the name because I thought, you know, iStock Africa sounds like uh, iStock, which already exists, um, which is a stock photo platform. And I thought, you know, I don't want too many problems. I just want to change the name. So I changed the name to Colorspace. And yeah, it has really been a beautiful journey so far uh, under Colorspace. It's been really amazing seeing a lot of people um, jump onto the stock photo industry and just dip their feet into the, for the first time into the stock photo industry, seeing clients being amazed at seeing a stock photo platform that exists in South Africa that's got images of black people. So yeah, that really, really has been interesting, opening up the first stock photo platform in South Africa, being the first person to do that. Really, really challenging. It still is challenging now, but it's one of the most beautiful journeys I will never, ever forget. Because again, as a photographer, it's opened up my mind to another world of photography, another way of earning money, another way of uh, meeting new people and exploring different work. So I really, really love the fact that, um, you know, um, I persevered and I went through. And again, I hope that somebody's listening out there and they take another, they take this idea of perseverance and they start their first. So you listening out there, get up now and just go do your first. Whatever first thing that you wanted to do, go and do it because I believe there's, 
you know, there's fruit at the end of it. And I'm testament to that. My story is testament to that. Color Space is a recognizable company in, globally um, as a stock photo platform. And that is true testament to chasing after my first. Embracing your first is a really, really powerful experience. I want to share another first for me. I recently shot my first international magazine cover. Nerve-wracking as it is, it sounds so mind-boggling, but through my mailbox, I found an email, somebody saying, hey, I really, really love your work, and I would love for you to shoot a magazine cover for our magazine. And I was so confused at first. I was like, whoa, am I gonna charge in dollars? How much is going to be? This is my first international magazine cover. Whoa, 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 there was so much going on. But I embraced it so much and you know, it's been such an amazing experience seeing my pictures on an international level uh, working with international people, charging in dollars, um, charging for usage fees. Those are first that I really like didn't know at first and I'm so glad that I did it and I embraced it. And now under my belt, something that I've always wanted, I have international uh, and an international magazine cover under my belt. That is truly mind boggling. When I started out, I never thought this would happen. But here I am smiling and I'm happy that I've got my first international magazine cover and I hope for many more firsts. So my, me and my friends at Standard Bank have partnered up to help people like you and me that are chasing their first, that are after their first, that are finding ways to get to their first. So myself and Standard Bank have partnered up to help you. So make sure that you interact or just check out my social media handles using the hashtag it can be and hashtag SBLove. Through those hashtags, you'll be able to see some inspirational stories like the one that I'm talking, the ones that I've told you about, and you'll also be able to see others. And most importantly, you'll be able to share your inspirational story because through sharing our firsts, we can inspire one another. And so I hope that you guys will share your stories and that you inspire me and that you hope you inspire someone else out there. Thank you so, so much once again for listening to my first stories and I hope that it inspired you and I hope you continue to chase more of your first just like I will continue to chase more of my first, especially through my friends at Standard Bank. All right, till the next episode, till the next podcast, YouTube channel, whatever it is, please make sure that you give me some love, press, press the like button, subscribe button, whatever it is that you need to do, show me some love and I'll make sure that I show you some love too. Till the next episode, Po, 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 peace. <laughs>